you know, obviously you know that um Alex Jones had an appearance on the Joe Rogan podcast a what a couple of weeks ago, maybe a few days ago actually. It feels like a week, but it's not really a week. Um it happened recently and um it was nice to see Alex Jones actually, I'm not gonna lie. He's a he's a crazy old fool, right? Um, you know, the conspiracies that he's into can be a little bit far fetched and you know, somewhat problematic as I say on the internet, but it's good to see him back on the internet because in my from my point of view i do think it was a bit over the top for him to be completely banned on all platforms i think most of these platforms are part of they form the part of our social communications um they are the main publishing platforms that we all have to use without them you're essentially silencing people people can say oh you're not make your own youtube but the moment you make your own youtube you're going to need servers the people that back that use the servers are going to be influenced by the stuff that's happening with the other platforms and they're probably not going to have you on there look at what's happened with bitchute so having him completely removed from the internet was obviously over the top i understand it from the point of this how sandy hook thing um, that was probably one of his biggest faux pas, considering the gravi you know, the gravitude of that tragedy um, involved kids, of course, and then going on to going on his broadcast. And uh, it's, again, I'm still not sure what he actually said regarding if or not he thinks they were actually crisis actors, the kids or the parents. But regardless, that just stuck on him in it and he can never shake that off so maybe that's the price you pay for the ultimate sin of you know alluding to the fact that maybe the children or the parents or children that died aren't really their parents and you know whatever it may be you probably that's the price you need to pay for it but there is a part of me that thinks that maybe he should have had an extended period in hibernation away from everything and then be allowed to be brought back on the platforms and it's up to and then they still have processes in place on you know certain platforms where they could just not push you out right they could just not um allow the algorithm to kind of recommend you to people they could easily have done that and then it's up to the population the audience to decide whether or not they want to back him right um i think that's how it should be i think people should be silenced i think the audience or the public should decide with their feet with their ears with their streams who they want to listen to and if they want to listen to somebody that you don't like it is what it is you just turn off and go to something else that you do like but regardless of that I do think it was interesting to see him on Joe Rogan's podcast because it did kind of awaken a side in Joe Rogan you don't necessarily see too often, right? Even though I don't think Alex Jones is a staunch, rep a staunch Republican, he does maybe lean more to that side in terms of backing Trump and him being his friend and, you know, um, obviously trying to um, expose some of the um, dodgy dealings of the Democrats and people on the left-hand side of politics in the US. But I did get the feeling that Joe was being a little bit more how would you say forward with his um re forward with his affinity with the republican party and it's always interested me why he doesn't just come out and say who he votes for he does sometimes he was versus independent or whatever it may be but just to kind of you know not get himself in any trouble and because he's got fucking money it literally doesn't matter who's in charge of the free world he just goes about living his life but especially now considering that we live in a climate where for the most part the left are the ones who are trying to counsel some of his friends in the comedy scene they're trying to get, diversify the lineups of comedy clubs at the expense of talent um they're ruining movies and whatever it may be for under the guise of racial diversity and social inclusion all this sort of stuff you would think that he would probably lend himself more to republicans just because of those things and of course his hunting background fighting background um of course you know there's other stuff that he's obviously most left leaning on but he doesn't necessarily just come out and say it but of course alex jones is kind of joe rogan's mouthpiece and an official pr guy and he went on another podcast and essentially echoed the thoughts that most of us think that joe rogan is basically a closeted trump fan but he's not he doesn't want to come out and say it for whatever reasons it is so here's alex jones on another podcast that i jacked from the homeless cats who clipped this up so big up you whoever clipped it up but here's alex rogan sorry alex rogan alex jones talking about joe rogan's um, affinity for the republicans and we've got a bunch of people roger stone you name it and uh you know i was gonna be on joe rogan tonight i kind of invited myself on he said hey you can still come on if you want but it was already on just a week ago and it was becoming such a fiasco he a and he's gonna be on my show in a couple of weeks i'm gonna be back on with him soon and so there's not big issues he wants to sneak attack when i come on the show so that's why i'm not doing show tonight yeah. that was my decision he said bow out if you want or come on and off record, you know, soon. I said, I'd rather be back on by myself and let Tim Dillon and Joe and them do a great job. Yeah, so look, all of us are Joe Rogan fans as well. 
Uh, we're all fans of well, Joe you know, Rogan. You know how it works. Yes. Yeah, you know we, how it works. We, when I announce it, he goes, why are you announcing it? Then they go after all the sponsors. When I just show up, they can't do that. Correct. Correct. I, and I will say this. Interesting, isn't it? So now we know that Joe is purposely flexing his muscles and sort of like, well, how do they call it? In the US and hip hop, um, he's letting his nuts hang, right? Uh, and this is what we've kind of always kind of secretly wanted as Joe Rogan fans, isn't it? Especially when, because especially off the back of, remember when he first went on Spotify and all the controversial podcasts didn't get populated over? He still hasn't explained it. He, there's still a sort of like a porting issue. But from what we know, the Spotify people didn't want those shows on his platform. It's cool. Fair enough. So now instead, he's going to have those controversial voices on his show and just not announce them prior, right? He's. I remember he kind of mentioned something along the lines of him getting annoyed that someone from Spotify reached out and asked him who's going to be on the show. He's like, I'm not telling you. I'm just, whoever's being good on is going to be on. And they don't have a schedule. They don't have any outline of who the guests are. So that obviously, um, you know, is a good indication as to the character of Joe. And again, like I said in the prior podcast, um, he's a great friend, man. He doesn't need to do this for Alex Jones. He doesn't need to do this for anybody that's been cancelled. He can just continue living his life. But the fact that he's willing to, I wouldn't say risk his platform because he's got more money than God. He can go go about and just start, restart a new podcast and be as um, you know rich and famous as he is now. But the fact that he's using his platform to provide his friends an option to get back into the public conversation, to get some eyes and ears on their projects again, because I'm assuming that would probably you know boost the numbers of the of what you call it. What's his net? What's his called? What's his site called? Infowars website again. It obviously boosts his profile. Maybe have people restart the conversation about you know. Um, cancellations on different platforms and stuff i like it i like that approach because uh, we share a similar audience with joe rogan how entertaining was alex jones on joe rogan last i mean that was the, the best show he's done this year that was the best alex is why i'm in it look how wide his shoulders are mate that's a big dude isn't it it's a big bloody dude best show of the year well i better do a better job next time i was a little I, yeah. I, I got too drunk. I Correct. love Rick and Rose. I love Joe too. <laughs> yeah, he was. He was. He was on fire. How, how was Joe's it? been a closet Trump supporter for a while. Yeah. Has he really? But oh yeah. yeah. But it was Tim Pool finally got him to. I mean, he supports Trump now, so it's good. Really? Yeah. Well, you see him on air doing it. He said he kind of regretted saying that. He kind of let it out, and then he was like, when everyone reacted shocked, he was like, "Oh shit, I think I said something I wasn't meant to say." Yeah. yeah, well, he, look, you always assume because you hear different issues and you're like, all right, well, he kind of favors the rights. But then he had Bernie Sanders and Tulsi Gabbard on when I was like, well, maybe he favors the look, left. Look, he likes everybody. He wants to get everybody tuned in. Joe's really a sweet. How weird is that in America? And again, I'll stop the clip from there. But how weird is it in America that you just can't speak to people, um, especially people involved in politics who are, you know, full on either side of the aisle? Because at the risk of being painted as somebody that agrees with their party politics or is you know somebody from the same political side how weird is that you just can't speak to people that like you can't have a conversation with bernie because everyone immediately think you're on the left you can't just speak to ted cruz because people think you're on the right it's utterly bizarre and it just can't have conversations which maybe explains why that country is so divided at the moment it's such a hot button topic because i think about it myself like if if joe rogan was english and he voted tory would that change the way i listen to the podcast i don't think it would honestly don't Maybe that's because of music and because of my life growing up, listening to Morrissey, listening to the Smiths, well, first, you know, via skateboarding, and then, of course, progressing and listening to Morrissey's solo stuff and then getting older and finding out, you know, his some of his politics and worldviews are a bit abhorrent and a bit questionable. But it got me, it got me, it was good to go through that education and to go through that experience because it immediately got me in the... Um, in the way of thinking of separate, how to separate art and artist. And I did it with Morrissey and the Smiths and, you know, where, you know, so I did it primarily with Morrissey. Whoops, I moved the camera there. I did it primarily with Morrissey. And ever since my life has been much better for it, I've been able to be a little bit desensitized from the stuff that people do in public and what they say and stuff and how that affects my um, level of enjoyment when it comes to listening to their work and stuff that they do. I don't get that. It doesn't annoy me as much as other people would. But then I guess, I don't know, if you're balls deep in politics, I can understand why you might think, you know what? <sighs> this Joe Rogan guy was my dude, but the fact that he's supporting this guy that I'm, you know, ad 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 ardently against, it just kind of tainted for me. But I honestly think if he was a Tory and if he was, you know, again, if Joe Rogan was from the UK, it wouldn't bother me much. I really wouldn't care. No. 
doesn't doesn't really bother me whatsoever. But I wonder what you guys think. What do you think if if you if Joe Rogan came out and said, "Hey," especially post election, said, "You know what? Um, I was I was voting Republican for the last four elections, or I voted for." Trump in this last election I'm bummed he didn't win but I'm happy the country can move on and get mended like I wonder yeah well, what do you guys think let me know in the comments down below would it bother you if if Joe was a Republican and you're a Democrat or whatever other party that's out there or do you just, or do you honestly not care let me know what you think down below especially from American listeners let me know in the comments